heroes are men or women who show courage and pride in what they do. You could also say true heroes are willing to lay down their life for the greater good. My great-grandfather, James Murphy, is an example of an American hero. James Murphy, or Murph, enlisted in World War I at the age of 16 to fight for our country. About 27 years later, he enlisted in World War II in his 40s to find his son who was missing in action. After fighting in two world wars, he returned to the States to start his own business and build his house with his son they were searching for in World War II. I've never met him personally, but people that did know him described him as a humorous, overall great guy. In this speech, I'll be talking about a man who is a true icon of greatness, my great-grandfather, James Murphy. On April 6, 1917, the United States of America declared war on Germany and entered the European conflict known as the Great War. Known today as World War I, this war between European powers lasted for four years. James Murphy enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in 1917. He was only 16 at the time, so he had a lot of validation to enter. James Murphy fought brutal trench warfare. In trench warfare, two opposing sides would build trenches on a large open field. The space in between the two trenches was known as no man's land. Trench raids could occur daily. In a trench raid, the commanding officer would order hundreds of men to run across no man's land in the midst of gunfire, artillery, and toxic gases. If you did reach the enemy's trench, you would be engaged in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. Most of the times, these trench raids were failures, and that's why there's a stalemate in World War I for three years, when neither side made any advances. The enemy wasn't the only threat in trench warfare. While in the trenches, diseases were common, with a cause of at least two million deaths. During James Murphy's time in the trenches, he wrote a journal, and was said to have had a great sense of humor. One you usually wouldn't find in the hellish environment of trench warfare. George Murphy, James Murphy's son, listed in the United States Air Force during World War II. He was a belly gunner on a B-17 bomber named Stinky, which actually appeared on the cover of Time Magazine. Stinky was shot down in enemy territory, with George Murphy as one of the few survivors. He survived the crash because the whole top of the plane was blown apart, but he was safe in his position on the bottom of the plane as the belly gunner. After his plane was shot down, he was captured by Nazis and imprisoned in a prisoner of war camp. Upon hearing this, James Murphy, at this time in his early 40s, rushed to enlist in the army. By the time James was fighting in Europe, George had escaped his POW camp. It is unclear where George Murphy went afterwards, and how he got home, and when, but James ended up fighting in another world war. During the time James enlisted, which was around 1944, the liberation of Europe had begun. James most likely landed on Normandy, fought in France, and later on the outskirts of Germany. James was the oldest, oldest in his squad, one of the few men who fought World War I and World War II. After James Murphy's tours and duty, he started up his own pool house bar in Philadelphia. He also built a house in New Jersey with his son George Murphy. He had a love for America's pastime, baseball. He was closely associated with the Philadelphia Athletics, and on May 24, 1935, a sort before his entrance into World War II, he was involved in the first Major League Baseball game played during the night. He died in 1983, leaving a legend behind him that inspires me, my family, and surely many others that have ever met him or heard his story. Men like James Murphy and his son George Murphy are the reason why we have the freedom in America we have today.